Hello, and in this presentation on Apache Isis, what I want to do is show you a feature that's in development for the next release um, relating to the RESTful Objects Viewer. And this is a feature to support uh, eager loading to minimize round trips, uh, something that's described in the RESTful Objects specification, uh, which you can download um, from this URL. And uh, it's actually in one of the appendices. Um, got the document here is section 34.4 minimizing round trips and the idea is using again a custom um, query argument and that is indeed how Apache Isis's RESTful Objects Viewer has implemented this feature so um, and the idea of this uh, this query argument is for it to provide a hint a bit like an XPath does as a way of identifying uh, nodes in an XML document that this the value of this string is going to identify additional JSON nodes to be included in the representation. So um, probably the best thing for me to do is to exp is to show you this. Um, I'm using the kitchen sink, which is a sort of a regression suite that we, um, application that we have that you can find linked from the ISIS add-ons website, um, and I have it up and running already. Here we are. So one of the um, one of the bits of this kitchen sink is this if you go to hierarchy objects you can pull back uh, a parent object and a parent has just a simple name and then has a collection of children and then if we go to the children they actually in turn have grandchildren as well so in the uh, wicket viewer um, we can see all the children details um, but if we if we go to the restful objects viewer and, and look at the same uh, information presented um, via the rest objects viewer as I say then um, let's have a look and see what we we have here um, so just I'll collapse away some of the things that aren't relevant to us so we have indeed um, a name and we have children and then we have um, a couple of extra actions so that's the same uh, sort of members but um, if we look at the children all we actually have here is actually just a link to another resource that allows us to go and find the children, which we can do. So we can go there. I'll collapse away again the links. So here we have the values. We can see there are three children. Uh, so that kind of corresponds to this. But it's actually not even giving us the contents of the of the grid, if you like. It's just saying that these are hyperlinks to the children. If I wanted to find the name of this child, although of course I can kind of see it in the title, but if I actually want, if there are many properties here, I would then need to go and navigate into that child link as well, in order to um, to pull that back. So finally, we get to yes, there's the value that um, the first child's name is child one one, uh, corresponding. Uh, to, to this information here that we have in the wicket viewer. So you can see that's pretty uh, chatty um, having to go to the parent and then visit the, the representation of the uh, children collection and then for each of those in turn to actually go and find the details. Um, when HTTP2 becomes ubiquitous this perhaps might not be quite so so much of a big deal this kind of chattiness but until such time um, that would certainly be perhaps a problem. So uh, the idea of this um, of this XRO follow links is to be able to provide a hint, as I say, so we can effectively say that when I go to the parent um, initial representation, that we can add in some extra details. So I have a crib sheet because I'll never type this um, correctly if I try to do it by hand. So let's just make sure we can follow this. So I've shown you there's the rep there's the parent object, and we can go and look at the children. Um, and so what we can now do is we can add in um, this uh, additional hint. What I'll actually do is I'm going to put this onto another tab and we can compare the two. So there's the, the regular uh, value and then if we do this, let's compare these two, I'll collapse things up again so we can sort of easily see the distinction between the two. So this was the, the, the basic um, children collection and then if we specify the uh, the link uh, hint, then we can see that in the contents of the first of these um, um, references, we've now got the value href as well. So um, that's basically what's going on there is that the, the value bit of the link is effectively addressing this uh, part of the representation. 
and then the the contents of that is a, it's a it's a list of hrefs of hyperlinks so by saying um i want to also follow the href what that basically means is is follow this link for me and create a new value being the kind of if effectively the the, the well the value of, of resolving that link so that's the way to think about it so that gives us the value and then we get the same of course for all three of the of the uh, objects there so basically what we're seeing here that's highlighted in in the presentation is this is effectively inlined the contents of following the link and so there is the information that we want as you can see so this effect is not too bad so we've now gone from um, where we started with a parent we can navigate to the children collection but rather than just following the simple link if we do this we've now got the grid and it's just two queries rather than one and then two and then another n so that's pretty good um, but we can go further we can do more um, with this uh, follow links so let's um, let me show you that as well because maybe we don't even want to do two uh, queries one for the parent and then one for the for the children can we combine the two together um, which is kind of more like the the, the wicket viewers uh, view of the world here's his details about the parent and then here's details about the children so yes we can do this as well so there's my parent I'm gonna create a new tab so I can just toggle between the two again so there's parent sorry there's parent and then um, let's add in a few more links and so what we're going to do this time is we're going to add in this hint onto the parent object okay so let's 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 sort of make this easy to see what's going on so this is the original without the hint and then here's the one with the hint again let's close things away a bit so by adding in the XRO follow links hint this time let's let's see if we can decode it so the first thing we're saying is we're talking about the members um, uh, node or property so this corresponds to this bit and then we don't actually want we're not interested in the name um, member um, in fact it's just a scalar so there's nothing to follow anyway but um, if that was actually a pointer a link to some other object we could we could actually talk about that as well but for now just focusing on the children we're saying okay I want to identify the the child I'm talking about the children member and for the children member give me the the values of those and so um, that's going to effectively cause this to be populated okay so we look at the the distinction distinguishing between the two let me just make sure they're easy to see the difference there so by identifying the children member and then saying give me back the value that's effectively causing that to um, be hydrated but it's still not the actual details of the children it's just simply giving me a, a handle so it's not actually saved me an awful lot of effort it's just saved me one link really uh, but if we then introduce href then things get rather more useful because uh, now what we have again let's collapse away the name is that we can see we've not only got the value which will be the three values of the three children but for the first and each of the children we've actually then got effectively the contents of evaluating its href which of course is the actual details you want so that hint there is basically giving us a grid view now okay it's quite a complex structure but the information is there and it's hopefully after a while you get that you can see how this pattern works and you can figure out pretty much um, any any bit of this we could we could pull back as an additional bit of data all right so that's um, not too bad at all so that was showing the titles and then we get the full details um, this goes the other way. Let's let's sort of change focus for a second. Let's think about one of the children. So let's get a new tab here. So here's a here's just a child object. And um, so the child has got a name. And from the child's point of view, it's um, it's got a reference to a parent. So that's the point pointing back. Let's look at it from Wicket's point of view. So if I'm looking at one of the children, then it's got a reference back to its owning parent, if you like so it would be nice when I look at a representation of the child to be able to get also the details of the of, of the parents because at the moment if I wanted those details I would have to go and follow the link and so forth 
So for this we can do the same thing. I shall just check my crib sheet again. And so this will do the job. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put the two side by side again as I've been doing. Okay, so there's child. Let's um let's collapse links. Let's collapse that guy as well. Uh, let's collapse the name, we don't care about that. That's the name of the child. Okay, so let's look at the two. So we can see that by asking, identif talking about member's parent, we're saying, okay, I'm interested in extra information about the parent member of the child, and what I want is is the value. In other words, follow the href, follow the link for me, and, and resolve that and, and paste the contents of following that link into my representation. So that gives us basically the eager loading either of collections, that was the children, or of effectively uh, simple references, which is the, the parent. And as a finale, um, what we could also do is, uh, <laughs> I'm just laughing because um, the, the example I'm just skipped over there is a, a bit of a, a mad one, but I'll, I'll show you it actually is the very final thing. Let's go back to the parent, and the parent has got children and the children has got grandchildren, so could we give a, a query that sort of combines the whole lot together, and of course I'm demoing it because the answer is yes you can. So. This is quite a big representation we've got here now, but let's see if we can just sort of collapse it and sort of see how it fits together. So we're looking at the parent, we're saying, oh yes, it's got um, some children, give me the values of, of each of those, in other words, resolve them for me. So here's the, the first of those children, and then we're looking at its representation, and it's got grandchildren, and um, we can see the values of those. And I think, actually, would it not also work if I then say dot value dot href? So um, this is what I meant to demo, actually. So we're on parent. Parent's got children. Give me um, each of the, for each of those children. Then resolve the link, which is this link here. Here's the members. Uh, the, f the first member of that first child, it's got a name, it's got a parent, it's also got grandchildren. So if we look at one of our, so we're looking at here, we're saying on, on a child, it's got grandchildren. And so for the, ch the grandchildren, I've said value href, I mean, in other words, resolve the, the link. So for the value href, resolve that, in other words, follow the link. And so now I'm actually looking at the details of the grandchildren as well. So I've actually got more information here than I would norm would actually have within the Wicket Viewer because I'm able to, to traverse as many levels down the hierarchy as I want. Um, just in the same way that with, say, SQL, you can join multiple tables together. Just reinventing SQL, really, aren't we? But there we are. So um, that I think is probably enough. Hopefully that all kind of made sense. Uh, what I'll just do on the um, in the Wicket Viewer is I'll just take this little set of um, in the Wicked what I meant to say, in the kitchen sink, I'll I'll add this to the README so that um, if you want to check out the code and try it out, you you can and see how you get on. Also, last thing to say, if you're wondering um, what the plugin is here that I'm using within uh, within Chrome, um, it's something called JSON View, and um, you'll find the same is available in Firefox at least. Okay, hope that was all uh, useful and um, check it out.